Gore wardens are honored with bearing the keys of the kingdom and serve to guard the borders of their liege's territory. Clad in what they perceive as great finery, these creatures lead flights of bloodthirsty predators falling on foes from above to savage them. In this video, we'll be showing you how to paint the fleshy air courts of Porrent Gore Warden so you can get them on the gaming table in no time at all. The paints we've used are on screen now, but remember that you can use whichever paints you like. Here's also a list of the additional equipment we've used. Same again here, use whichever brushes and tools suit you. If you're new to painting or want to brush upon your skills, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about our paints and techniques. We've undercoated our Gore Warden with Grey Sear Spray. We'll be using lots of contrast for this model, so Grey Sear is going to work great. You could use Rayphone if you'd prefer. Let's get started. The first step is to paint all the brown areas using Fondia Brown. We're going to pick out the belt and the collar. We'll be applying this with a small airbrush and thinning it down with some water first. We want to apply this in two thin layers instead of one thick one, so adding water is really important. We're painting these areas first as they're quite tricky to get to. This way, we're free to be messy. Once we're finished, we can simply go back with some thinned down grey sear and neaten up any mistakes we've made. With two thin layers of Fondia Brown added and then tidied up, we're ready to move on. We're going to stick with the theme of painting all the small details first and start painting the silver areas. We'll be doing this using Lead Belcher, once again thinned down with some water. We'll be picking out the belt buckles and all the keys. Take your time until you've applied Lead Belcher to all the areas that you want to be silver. Once it's dry, we can apply a second thinned down layer to all the same places. We've applied two thin layers of Lead Belcher to all the areas that we want to be silver and now we're ready to move on. Next, we'll be painting two thin layers of Balthazar Gold onto some of the keys to add a variety of different colours. How many you pick out is up to you. Alternatively, you can skip this step entirely and just leave them all silver if you prefer to. Now that all the metallic details on our Gore Warden have been painted, before we move on, we're going to quickly change our paint water. We don't want any pesky metallic flakes getting into our other colours, so it's always safe to change it after using any metallic paints. Once we've got some fresh water ready, we can start the next step. We're now going to paint the wings with Corvus Black. We're only focusing on the skeleton here. We'll be painting the membrane itself later on, which means we're free to be messy. Once again, we'll be thinning this down with some water first and applying it in two thin layers. Once we've done, we're then going to dry brush some Corvus Black onto the area where it meets the grey steer. This will create a much smoother transition. Take your time and build up the transition slowly until you're happy. If you want to know more about dry brushing, we've got a video in our Painting Essentials playlist all about it. Next, we'll be painting the back wing membrane, talons, claws, and this tuft of hair on our Gore Warden's torso. We'll be doing this using Black Legion, straight from the pot. For the wing membrane, we're only going to be painting the back of it, but it's up to you if you want to paint both sides of the wings black. Alternatively, you can skip painting them here entirely and paint both sides purple. We'll show you how to do this on the other side later on. If you do decide to paint them now, you may need two layers of Black Legion, as these are large flat areas and the undercoat can show through underneath. With all the black areas complete, we're now going to add a quick dry brush to both wings using Mechanica Standard Grey. The Mechanica Standard Grey will catch on all the raised areas and create a subtle highlight. This step is super fun and produces some awesome results, but try not to get carried away. Less is more here, so start by dry brushing lightly. We can always go back and add more if we want to. The back of our Gore Warden's wings are now complete. Next, we're going to shade all the brown, silver and gold areas we added earlier using Agrax Earthshade. Be as careful as you can not to get any Agrax Earthshade onto the Gracier undercoat. Don't worry if you do make any mistakes though, we can always go back with some thinned down Gracier afterwards and tidy them up. We finished shading all the brown, silver and gold and the Agrax Earthshade has really helped to define those areas. Before we move on to the next step, we're going to highlight all the metallic areas with Stormhost Silver. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but there's not a lot of metallic areas on this model, so this extra step is a super quick way of making your model look awesome. If you do decide to highlight these areas, thin your Stormhost Silver down with some water first, and then remember to change your paint water once you're done. Next, we're going to paint all the bone, teeth and flayed skin using Skeleton Horde straight from the pot. Same as before, if you do make any mistakes, go back with some thin down grey sear and fix them up. With all the bone, teeth and flayed skin complete, we're going to move on to Screaming Skull to add a quick dry brush over all these areas. Using our small dry brush, we're going to start moving our brush back and forth across these areas. How heavy or light you dry brush here is up to you. 
We're doing it lightly, but applying it slightly heavier towards the bottom of the flayed skin, as that part of the skin would be thinner. If you're feeling adventurous, once you've finished, put down your dry brush and start highlighting. We're going to add a simple edge highlight to the more obvious lines on all the flayed skin. We're also going to add a tiny dot to the tip of all the talons and stray hairs to make them look extra sharp. If you do decide to do this, don't forget to thin your paint down with some water first. We finished highlighting and as you can see, it's made all that bone and flay skin look extra awesome. Next we're going to paint the inside membrane of the wings. We'll start by applying three thin layers of Barrack Nar Burgundy. Thin it down with some water first and then start painting it onto the wing membrane. We're only painting this onto the inside membrane, but you can apply this to both sides of the wings if you want to. It's completely up to you how you go about it. Once we've applied two thin layers of Barrack Nar Burgundy, we can move on to shading it. We're simply going to apply Norm Oil straight from the pot over the whole area. You'll only need one layer of this, but it can take quite a while to dry. We recommend leaving it for about an hour to fully dry. Now that the Norm Oil has completely dried, we can see what a cool effect that's had on our wings. Next, we're going to add a dry brush of Screamer Pink over all the purple membrane. We're applying this using a small dry brush, focusing more towards the bottom of each section. This is where more light would shine through the skin, so we want the purple to be brighter to simulate that. With that said, how much or how little you apply is up to you. With the Screamer Pink dry brush complete, the wings and our Gore Warden are finished. Our paint job's really starting to take off. Next, we'll be adding Berserker Bloodshade straight from the pot to the inside of the ears and the mouth. If you want to, you can also apply this all over the wing membrane to give a red tone. We're super happy with how our wings look already, so we aren't going to add an all over shade. What we will do though, is just apply some Berserker Bloodshade to these folds in the centre of each wing, to make them stand out a bit more. Whether you do this or not is up to you. Now that all the other colours on our Gore Warden have been blocked in, we can move on to painting the skin. We'll start by applying Griff Charger Grey mixed with some Contrast Medium. We'll mix it with three parts medium to one part Griff Charger Grey. This will make the colour nice and subtle. Feel free to mix up the ratio if you want a stronger or a lighter tone. Once we've got our mix ready, we can start applying it to all the skin on our Gore Warden. Try your best not to get any of this onto our other completed colours. You'll only need one layer of this, but it can take quite a while to dry, so make sure it's completely dry before moving on. With the Griff Charger Grey and Contrast Medium mix applied, our Gore Warden looks fantastic. We're aiming to paint a greenish skin colour, like on the box art, but if you're looking for a paler skin tone, what we've got here works great. If you're happy with how the skin looks at this point, you can leave it here and skip the next few steps. Before we move on to adding any green, we're going to first highlight all the skin with Grey Sear. We'll thin it down with some water first, and then start picking out some lines and edges with a small layer brush. How much or how little you highlight is up to you, but some easy places to start are details on the face, hands and feet. This highlight may seem a little overpowering at first, but that's completely fine. The next step will sort that out no problem. We've finished highlighting all the skin with Grey Sear, and it's really helped to make all those lines and edges stand out. Next, we're going to apply a mix of Militarum Green and Contrast Medium over all the skin. We'll be using one part Militarum Green to four parts Medium. Once we've got the mix ready, we're going to apply it all over the skin with a small base brush. This will not only create that iconic Flesh Eater Quartz green tone, but it will also tint all those highlights and make them appear more subtle and natural. We're really happy with how this looks, but if you want a harsher green, use less contrast medium and add more Militarum Green. With the Militarum Green fully dry, our Gore Warden is looking awesome and nearly ready for battle. All that's left to paint is the eyes in the colour of your choice. Before we do that though, we're going to quickly fill them back in with Grey Sear. You can also apply this to the teeth if you want to. After that, we'll be using Imperial Fist Yellow straight from the pot to simply tint the eyes. With the eyes complete, our Gore Warden just needs basing. We've based our abhorrent Gore Warden with a blood-soaked snowy base. If you want to know how to create a base like ours, check out our video all about creating blood-soaked snowy bases, where we use this exact model. The abhorrent Gore Warden is a super fun model to paint, and includes features that are found on loads of other Flesh Eater Quartz models. Lots of the techniques and paints we've used in this video can also be used on your other cursed delusional creatures. So if you're painting Crypt Ghouls, for example, you can paint the skin and bone using the very same methods that we use in this video. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out our other videos on the Warhammer YouTube channel. Or you can head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff will be happy to help. Thanks for watching this video. See you next time. Bye bye.